Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel sa video na to. Pag-aaralan natin ang isang sequence at kung paano kunin ang nth term formula ng sequence na yon. Without further ado, let's get this lesson started. Suppose hinahanap natin ang nth term formula or formula for a sub n ng sequence na 4, 13, 28, 49, and so on. So dito, sa unang tingin, medyo mahirap siya kasi hindi natin agad makikita yung common difference nila. We cannot label this as an arithmetic sequence or geometric sequence dahil wala itong common difference or common ratio. Kaya naman, ito ay i-consider natin as a general sequence na hahanapan natin ng nth term formula. So, para mas madali, ako personally, ginagawa ko to I make an illustration out of the given sequence. Yung n dito, it means kung pang ilang term siya. So, 1 dahil siya yung first term, yung 4. 2 dahil second term, yung 13. 3 dahil third term yung 28 at 4 dahil fourth term yung 49. Ito yung given, 4, 13, 28, and 49. In-illustrate ko siya using different boxes uh, in such a way na yung magiging obvious sa illustration yung pattern or yung formula. Let's start with the illustration for the first term. Meron tayong four boxes. Yan. Next, for 13, we have a total of 13 boxes, pero naka-group siya in this way. For the third term, meron tayong 28 boxes, pero naka-group po din ng ganito. And finally, for 49, we have these boxes na naka-group po in this manner. So, what we're going to do is, out of this illustration, hahanapan natin ng common pattern or common behavior itong mga boxes na to. Paano sila nagkakapare-pareho. And out of that similarity, doon natin bubuoin yung formula para sa A sub N. So, ako, nagsisimula ako lagi doon sa pinakamalaking term na given. Kasi dito, kung dito tayo magsisimula sa A sub 1 or dito sa 4, parang ang dami nating pwedeng makuhang pattern. By the way, ire-relate nga pala natin itong N, 1, 2, 3, 4. Ano yung ginagawa sa 1 para maging 4? Ano yung ginagawa sa 2 para maging 13? Anong ginagawa sa 3 para maging 28? Anong ginagawa sa 4 para maging 49? And dapat lahat ng process na yun ay pare-pareho dahil they belong to one sequence. Tulad ng sabi ko kanina, hindi ako nagsisimula dito kasi maraming pwedeng gawin sa 1 para maging 4. Pwedeng dagdagan lang ng 3, 4 na. Pero pag naman yung 2, dagdagan ng 3, hindi naman 13 yun. Dapat, kung ano yung ginawa sa 1 para maging 4, ganun din yung gagawin sa 2 para maging 13. Ganun din yung gagawin sa 3 para maging 28 and so on. Kaya ako, ang advice ko, magsisimula lagi dun sa pinakamataas na given na number dun sa sequence, which is ito, 4 and 49. Kung mapapansin nyo, meron tayong 49, a total of 49 boxes dito sa illustration. You may pause this video and try looking for a pattern for this set of figures. Ginropo ko siya sa ganyang way para kahit pa paano maging obvious for you kung ano yung pattern na sinasabi ko. Afterwards, titingnan natin kung tama yung pattern na naisip mo. For n equals 4, the illustration shows na meron tayong 3 groups of squares. Ito yung tinatawag kong 3 groups. Ito, this is the first group, second group, and third group. At may isang separate square dito sa tabi. At the same time, sa loob ng isang group, the length is 4 units and the width is also 4 units. 
kung bakit natin hinighlight yan, later we'll find out. Baka kasi ganito rin yung common observation natin sa ibang illustration. Let's go further doon naman sa n equals 3. Dito sa n equals 3, kung mapapansin natin, meron din tayong tatlong groups of squares. Ito yung tatlong group. This is the first group, the second group, and the third group. At meron isang separate square. Ito. At the same time, sa loob ng isang group of squares, meron tayong 3 na width at 3 na length. Hmm, does this sound familiar? Tingnan natin kung itong familiar na similarity ng n equals 4 at n equals 3, maa-apply din natin sa n equals 2. Sa n equals 2 naman, meron pa rin tayong tatlong groups of squares at isang separate square. Tapos, sa isang group, meron tayong 2 na length at 2 na width. And finally, for the last illustration, n equals 1, meron pa rin tayong 3 groups of squares. Actually, ang ibig sabihin na group dito ay itong nakahiwalay. 3 squares na nakahiwalay, tapos may isa rin dito sa right, isang square. Tapos, dito sa group na sinasabi ko, meron kang isang length at isang width. Kasi nga, one square lang sa group na yon. Compiling all the observations, for n equals 4, merong tatlong groups, may isang separate. Tapos, yung length niya at width, parehong 4. Doon naman sa 3, recall natin, meron din tayong tatlong groups of squares at may isang separate square. Tapos, yung length at width niya, 3 parehas. For n equals 2 naman, ganun din, meron tayong 3 groups of square, 1 separate square, tapos yung length at width niya parehong 2. And finally, for n equals 1, ganun pa din, 3 groups of squares, isang separate square, tapos yung length at width ng group ay parehong 1. So with all this being said, you may pause this video and look for their similarities. Dito sa similarities na to, magiging obvious for you dahil ginamitan ko na ng color coding kung ano yung obvious na magkakapareho. And then afterwards, ire-resume natin tong video para i-check kung tama ba yung naisip mo na similarity. Okay, lahat sila may n bilang length at n bilang width. Ibig sabihin, kung mapapansin nyo, kung ang n equals 4, ang length niya 4 din, ang width niya 4 din. Yung n equals 2, to ang length niya, to ang width niya. Ganun din sa n equals 3 at n equals 1. Kung ano yung n niya, yun yung nagsasabi kung ano yung length at kung ano yung width. At the same time, lahat sila may 3 groups of squares and 1 additional square sa bawat illustration na nakita natin kanina. So continuing here, gawa na tayo ng formula. To get the total number of squares for each item, ang gagawin natin, we need to get the area of the 3 groups plus the additional square. Recall nga natin, paano ba tayo kumuha ng area ng isang rectangle? Di ba length times width? So, dahil meron tayong n na length at n na width, ang area para sa isang group ay length times width or n times n. Simplifying n times n, we have n squared. Pero itong n squared, sa isang group lang yan. Ilang groups ba tayo meron sa bawat illustration? Di ba tatlo? So, we have here area for the three groups, so 3 n squared. But wait! There's more. May naiiwan pa tayong isang concept, which is ito, may additional 1 square pa. So, dahil meron pang additional 1 square, kailangan pa yung isama sa bilang. Dahil additional siya, pandagdag siya, ang ating formula ngayon for a sub n is the sum of 3n squared and 1. This one. The formula for the sequence 4, 13, 28, 49, and so on is a sub n equals 3 n squared plus 1. Ito na yung pinaka formula natin para sa sequence na to. Kung ayaw maniwala, i-check natin. Is 
a sub n equals 3n squared plus 1. Really the formula for 4, 13, 28, 49, and so on. Let's try substituting different values of n from 1 hanggang 4. Tapos tingnan natin kung ito nga ba yung lalabas na sagot. Try natin sa 1. Kapag sinubstitute tong 1 dito, magiging 3 times 1 squared plus 1. But 1 squared is 1. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4. Ayun, tumama yung first term natin. Let's continue sa n equals 2. 2 naman yung isa substitute dito. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. Plus 1, we have 13. So 13, tama pa rin sa second term. How about for the third term? The third term is 3, quantity 3 squared plus 1. But 3 squared here is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 plus 1 is 28. And that matches the third term. Now for the fourth term, I want you to do it on your own. Pause this video and try solving for n equals 4. Tingnan natin kung tama nga ba, 49 nga ba dapat ang lalabas na a sub 4. Okay, substituting n equals 4, we have this expression. And then 4 squared is 16. 16 times 3 is 48. Plus 1, we have 49. So kung mapapansin nyo, yung ginamit natin na values na n from 1 to 4, nung sinubstitute natin sa nakuha natin na formula, which is this one, Ang nakuha natin na sagot ay yung given. Ibig sabihin, tama yung nakuha natin na formula. By the way, this is a sub 4. Yan, a sub 4 dapat yan. So therefore, tama nga yung ating formula. a sub n equals 3n squared plus 1. So that's it. Ganon tayo kumuha ng a sub n na formula para sa isang sequence. Kailangan lang natin maging alert sa different patterns. Mas maganda nga tulad ng sabi ko, i-illustrate natin yan using different boxes or circles. Depende sa gusto nyong i-drawing. As long as dapat yung drawing, it will help you realize kung ano ba yung underlying similarity sa bawat term. But as you go through your lessons about sequences, mas may expose pa kayo sa ibang patterns and exposure to different patterns will help you be more alert in finding the similarity between the terms. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.